In this video, we're going to have a look at the properties of angles at parallel lines. Parallel lines are two lines that are always the same distance apart. These two lines will never intersect. Parallel lines are indicated by adding arrow points on the specific lines. If I now go and draw a line that intersects both these parallel lines, called a transversal, there will be a whole lot of angles formed at the points of intersection. Specific combinations of these angles each have a specific property. The first of these properties is when we have a look at the two corresponding angles. They are called corresponding because they are on the same side or corresponding side of our transversal, in this case on the right of that line, as well as on the corresponding side of the two parallel lines, in this case, below them. And these two corresponding angles formed by parallel lines will always be the same size. Remember that in geometry, you always have to supply a reason for any statement you make. In this case, that reason will be corresponding angles and you need to mention the specific pair of parallel lines because these corresponding angles will only be equal if they are formed by parallel lines. And then I'm going to remind you that you can always identify your corresponding angles by forming an F with your parallel lines. Next up, let's have a look at alternate angles. These two angles are once again named so because they are on alternate or alternating sides of our transversal, in this case left and right of it, and then they're also on alternate sides of the two parallel lines, below the one and above the other. These two alternate angles will also always be equal when formed by parallel lines. The reason you need to supply will be alternate angles with the parallel lines. For alternate angles, you will always be on the lookout for an N or a Z to be able to say that those angles are equal. Finally, we have a look at co-interior angles. These are two angles that are both on the inside of our two parallel lines. And in our case, angle BGH and angle GHD added up will equal 180 degrees. And the reason for this will be co-interior angles along with my parallel lines. And this time you're going to have a look out for a U formed by the parallel lines. In our next examples, you will have to be on the lookout for these three options, as well as angles on a straight line, revolution, and vertically opposite angles. Example one. Calculate the size of the angles indicated with lowercase letters. In the sketch, you will see that we have two pairs of parallel lines, A, B, and C, D, as well as E, F, and H, I. If I now start off with angle A, by forming this angle, you will see that this angle, along with the known angle of 94 degrees, form an F, for corresponding angles. This means that these two angles are equal. So I can write down that angle A is 94 degrees with my reason corresponding angles and then I have to add the specific pair of parallel lines which in this case is EF parallel to HI. Now that we have angle A we can move on to angle B. And here you will see that when looking at angle B along with my known angles, A and B form a U. And that means we can use co-interior angles. This means that B plus A, which is 94 degrees, should add up to 180 degrees because they are co-interior angles. And this time the pair of parallel lines will be AB parallel to CD. Therefore, angle B is equal to 86 degrees. Lastly, we can determine the value of C. C along with B form alternate angles. That means that angle C 
is also 86 degrees because of alternate angles and this time my parallel lines will be EF parallel to HI. Example 2. Determine the value of A, B and C. In our sketch you will see that we have three lines that are all parallel. Starting off with A again, you will see that forming angle A, you can continue on to angle C and form a Z. These are alternate angles, which means that angle A is also 50 degrees because they are alternate angles and here the pair of parallel lines will be FE parallel to CD. If I now move on to determining the value of B, you will see that B plus the 55 and the 50 of A form a revolution. That means that B plus the 50 of A plus the given 55 degrees should equal 360 degrees because they form a revolution. So B will be the 360 degrees minus 50 degrees and minus the 55 degrees. That means that B is 255 degrees. Finally, we need to determine the value of C, which is part of an angle. This angle, along with the 55 degree angle at point E, forms an F, which means we have corresponding angles. Therefore, we can say that the whole angle of 2 times C plus 10 degrees should be equal to 55 degrees because they are corresponding angles with the parallel lines AB parallel to FE. And to now determine the value of C, we firstly need to subtract 10 on the right and that will give us 45. And now after dividing both sides by 2, C will be 22,5 degrees.